Hello, Life Creators. Welcome back to my channel. Today's lesson, I call it a lesson. Today's topic, how to have balance in our lives and time to do the things that will nurture us. For most of us, we often don't have enough time. Maybe we do not prioritize ourselves and our needs over all the other things that we put first. We don't take the time to take care of ourselves in all areas so that we feel whole and balanced. We cannot let others drain all of our energy. We have to claim where we will put our energy and really consider what are the aspects of our lives that we truly value. We often speak of what we value, but we do not give our best attention, focus, time, love into those areas of our lives. Who are you really? Does your attention nurture the things that give you joy? Notice how you spend each day. What are you doing? Who are you talking to? Where are you going? What are you seeing? And then you will see what you are actually prioritizing in your life. Is it on the things you say are most important to you? Remember the song, Cats in the Cradle, where the father at first and then the son keep postponing spending time together. And of course, their time together never came. That song always gets to me. Sometimes our lives are out of balance. We spend too much time on some aspects and not enough time on others that would really count. We may pour all of our energy into our work, our job, our career, and not enough with our family. Maybe we make time for our children and not for our spouse. Maybe we give time to our partner and leave the children with their devices, with their iPads, with their cell phones, with their uh, whatever devices, and we never really deeply interact with them. Children and teens are consumed with their devices, and many times we fall into the pattern of letting them do so, so that we uh, can do what we want, and it's not good. Sometimes I've seen people out together, a whole family, and everyone is on their devices. Maybe we don't make time for our parents. Maybe we don't make time for our siblings. Do we spend one-on-one -on -one time with these special people or do we see each other in a family gathering in a group where we really talk about nonsensities and nothing of value? Do we spend too much time shopping perhaps, spending too much money when we say our priority is financial freedom? Do we socialize too much? Do we socialize too little? Do we plan for the things we value in our lives? Or do we get pulled in the direction of the thing that is screaming the loudest? We have to be conscious of our choices. Let's be aware of how we can bring our lives into a better balance. Maybe make a list of the areas that are important to you and really look at how much time and attention you are giving to those things and to those people. There are chores and tasks and obligations that must be tended to each day. But we all realize that we will never get it all done. There is always more to do. So we have to know when to stop, have a cutoff time, and give time to other areas. We have to let some things go and not expect to be perfect, to have every little thing completed. We make lists in the morning, but we have to know and understand that we cannot accomplish everything on that list each day. It's okay for things to carry over. Otherwise, you'll feel that all you are doing is trying to keep up, and then you won't feel any joy in your day. Many of us do our routines well, but we don't get to do much more. But the flip side of that is don't avoid tending to the areas that you must. Otherwise, you will be out of balance there. There. Don't avoid your responsibilities. Do the things that are important and also pencil in fun, 
exciting things you want to do. Another area to evaluate is your relationships. Be aware of those that nurture you and those that drain you. How are you getting along with your partner, your children, your friends, the people in your daily round, your coworkers, your boss, the people you interact with as you're doing errands and things throughout your day? Be aware these relationships really affect your sense of well-being. We have to have fulfilling relationships in order to create our best life. Your inner being knows when you're acting with love, kindness, patience, etc. And when you feel badly, it's because your inner being, your soul, your presence within uh, knows you have, have not done the right thing. When you do the right thing and you act correctly, your energy level soars. When we do the right thing, we are happy. And our inner being cheers us on. Sometimes when you're annoyed with others and you don't like their behavior, maybe it's really based on what is going on inside of you. When you have a problem with many others, maybe you are the problem. It's hard to believe that we could be the problem. Of course, there are many times when people do not do the right thing. They let you down. They mistreat you. They mistreat us. Don't worry. There are times when people don't carry out their promises. But when people always mistreat you, when people always let you down, when people always take advantage of you, look carefully at yourself and examine if you may be acting in such a way as to elicit back what you have been sending out. They say, we are told, the world is a mirror of us. To create our best life, we have to send out positive energy. We have to feel vital, vibrant. So begin to cultivate and flow your best energy. And then notice how the world responds to you. Be real, be kind, be friendly, be accepting as much as you can be, be accommodating, be helpful when you can, and then see how you are treated in return. Sometimes you need to establish some separation from others or set boundaries for your own well-being. Some people you can't be around for too long. Other people you need to be around more, to be closer to and to spend more time with them. Some people are good for our souls, but treat yourself well and others will treat you well. Expect the best behavior toward yourself. Soften your attitude toward the world and it will be kinder to you. Be accepting, be patient, and the world will be friendlier to you. Start using these ideas. Every single intention Every single interaction with people in your daily round affects your life. Every situation you observe, every child, every animal, the actions you see, um, how you see other people treating each other will affect you. Put yourself in the best situations and environments you can. We are all connected. Not only the relationships in our family circle matter, all the interactions we have each day matter. Every action, every word, every movement is intricately connected in this theater of life that we're living in and has an effect on us. Everything is in its perfect timing and the perfect timing affects the perfect outcome. Every encounter with another human being is a chance for us to be kind, to be helpful, to say a nice thing, to compliment, to share, to be respectful. So be aware of your words and your actions and take responsibility for them. And your thoughts too. Thoughts are things and they create. There are laws in this universe 
and must be followed or there will be consequences. And if you act wrongly, you, you mustn't worry. You can try again tomorrow. Scarlett O'Hara said, tomorrow is another day. I love that. But consider we are all valuable. No one person's better than another. We're all connected. We're all seeking to develop our lives as best we can. Most people are good. Most people want the best for themselves, for their children, for their friends, their loved ones, but also for the world and for the planet. We also cross each other's path for a reason. We learn something. We have heard that we may be entertaining angels unawares. Maybe we were related in another life. Who knows? I love to think of these things. Do for others as you would have them do unto you. We have to work on ourselves. We have to be our best. We have to learn the skills that will make us better. We have to be lifelong learners. Life offers us many gifts, many opportunities. Can we see them and receive them? Or do we throw them away with both hands? that perhaps we have done in our lives or we see other people doing. Life offers us lessons. Do we heed them and learn to do better? If not, we will keep getting that same lesson till we learn it. Why do the same things keep happening to us and to other people? Maybe we or they are not learning their lesson. Seek balance, a lot of time to focus on exercise, on creativity, on fun, on nature, on getting sunshine, on indulging in the sweet little things, the little joys of life. You give a lot to the world. You put out effort in business and handling obligations and nurturing your relationships and being the best person that you can be. But are you resting? and allowing yourself to be helped and to be loved and to be cared for and to be treasured, can you receive? You feel happier to give if you know you will be able to rest and receive as well. Do you practice self-care? Do you allow for private time? Do you allow time to renew yourself? Do you allow time to revitalize yourself? Do you neglect yourself? Do you put off doing the things you need? We must rest when we are tired or we become bitter, we become resentful, stressed. We're not pleasant to be around. Everything about you will suffer if you don't take care of yourself. Your health will suffer, your relationships, your creativity will suffer. So find your own rhythm. Have private time. Carve out time for fun, for love, for quiet. Wake up slowly in the morning. Get up earlier so you have time to have your coffee, have your tea, read, think, meditate, pencil in free time, work on your calendar. Don't book too many social engagements. Don't say yes too quickly. Say, I'll get back, I'll check, I'll see. Because then you have to backpedal. Go at your own pace. Rushing is terrible. Have your own space as well. Cherish the life you are creating as you go. If going out and having fun and being with lots of people restores you, then do that. Some people don't like to be alone. They get depressed. If you like action, seek that. If you need to go out and socialize, then do so. Everybody needs to find their own way. Be what and who you are. Do what you need, but give yourself a break. Don't wait to have free time. Schedule it. Carve it out for yourself. And finally, step farther out out of your daily routine, out of your comfort zone, and do something to increase your life, to make you stronger, bigger, to grow, to improve. What can you upgrade? What can you try that's new? Seek out people who will help you grow. Spiritual teachers. Sometimes your spiritual teacher may be a little two-year-old who is showing you the wisdom of the world. Practical teachers. 
whatever teacher crosses your path and that you seek out will help you learn and grow. Just don't be mediocre. Create your very best life. If you have found value in this video, please press the like button, please subscribe. And as a teacher, I'm going to assign these questions. Do you feel that you don't have enough time? Can you make time for the things that truly bring you joy? How can you create a better balance in your life starting today? What needs your attention? And what needs to get less of your energy? Are you nurturing yourself? Are you putting time into doing things that will help you grow and expand? Which of these ideas can you implement, implement to create your best life? I hope you have received value. Press like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.